You ever notice how talking about outboard motors is basically the boating world's version of a pub fight? Mate, Japanese motors last forever. Yeah, but American ones have balls. And just like that, two blokes are chest deep in a debate that started in the 80s and never really ended. But here's the real question. Why are Japanese and American outboard motors so different? Is it culture? Is it engineering? Is it because one side uses a calculator and the other uses a hammer? Let's dive in. USA versus Japan. It's not just horsepower. It's philosophy, pride, and just a little bit of petty competition. Let's talk powerhouses, the giants of the outboard engine world, and who's really calling the shots when it comes to pushing boats and starting debates at boat ramps. In the Japanese corner, we've got Yamaha, Suzuki, and Honda. Yamaha is basically the Chuck Norris of outboards. It just doesn't quit. Ask any boater and they'll probably say, my Yamaha's got more hours than my actual job. Then there's Suzuki, the quiet achiever. You won't hear it bragging at the dock, but it's got some of the most fuel-efficient and torque-happy motors out there. And Honda. Honda outboards feel like they came off an assembly line right next to a Civic. Smooth, quiet, and just a bit too responsible. It's the engine equivalent of someone who brings Tupperware to a barbecue. Practical, maybe not exciting, but you're always glad they showed up. Now flip over to the American corner. Mercury Marine is the stark waterback. Big, loud, high-tech, and usually the first to try something wild like a steerable gear case on a V12. From tiny teeny engines to 600 horsepower ocean churners, Mercury's got a motor for every mood swing. Then we've got Evin Rude and Johnson, once the rock stars of the industry under OMC. They had innovation, attitude, and a bit of chaos, which might explain why they're no longer around. They went down swinging, though, and finally, the wild card, Tohatsu. Yes, it's a Japanese brand, but it's been quietly building engines for American companies like Mercury and the late Evin Rude. It's kind of like that exchange student who ends up on both football teams somehow, quietly running the game from the shadows. We'll circle back to them. They're sneakier than they look. Alright, let's talk about where these motors are actually born. And spoiler alert, it's not always where you'd expect. In fact, it's less made in and more assembled by a multinational corporate Rubik's Cube. Take Yamaha. Most folks assume every Yamaha outboard is made in some pristine, high-tech facility in Japan, with engineers in lab coats sipping green tea. But actually, a large number of Yamaha outboards sold in the US are built or assembled in Georgia and Tennessee. Yep, right in the land of barbecue and bass boats. But don't panic, purists. They're still built to Japanese standards. Precision, quality control, and that stubborn refusal to break down, all still intact. Now, Mercury, the red-blooded, bald eagle made in America powerhouse, right? Well, mostly. Mercury's big engines, 100% built in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, classic American heartland. But go smaller, anything under 30 horsepower, and you're looking at engines built by Tohatsu in Japan. That's right, the American kicker on your tinny might just be a Tohatsu in disguise. Oh, and fun fact, Yamaha actually builds powerheads for some Mercury models. So Mercury, the American icon, is literally powered, in part, by its biggest Japanese rival. Talk about sleeping with the enemy. Bottom line, the global economy doesn't care about flags, just efficiency. Your Japanese engine might be southern-made, and your American one might have had sushi for lunch. It's not about where it's built, it's about how it's built, and who did the talk specs. If there's one topic guaranteed to start an argument at a boat ramp or get someone cut off at the local marine bar, it's this. Which brand actually lasts the longest? 
Japanese brands, especially Yamaha and Honda, are the gold standard when it comes to reliability. Yamaha in particular has earned its reputation the old-fashioned way, by just refusing to die. You'll hear things like, my 150's got 3,000 hours and still starts on the first turn, usually followed by someone casually kicking their cowling like it's a loyal dog. Honda's no slouch either. Their outboards are basically car engines in disguise, smooth, quiet, and built to outlive most marriages. Suzuki is the underdog here. It doesn't get as much hype, but their lean burn tech is impressive. Their whisper quiet, sip fuel like a Prius, and just keep chugging, especially in the mid-range where they're getting harder to ignore. Then there's Mercury, once the wild card, now the redemption arc. Their older two strokes were, let's say, personality driven, but the new generation of four strokes? Totally different story. The Verado line, especially, has brought serious reliability and tech to the table. They've done their homework and probably copied some of Yamaha's too, but we'll get to that. Still, if your life depends on your motor starting 40 miles offshore, the average boater is putting their money on Yamaha. They've just built that kind of trust, not with marketing, but with decades of never stranding people when it counts. When it comes to performance and tech, let's be real. Mercury is that one cousin who shows up to family barbecues in a Tesla, wearing a smartwatch, talking about crypto, and asking why your boat doesn't have Wi-Fi. They've thrown everything at their outboards. Digital throttles, joystick piloting, active trim, and a V12 monster with a steerable gear case that sounds like something stolen from a Bond villain's escape boat. Their smart craft and vessel view systems give you more data than a Formula One team. RPM, fuel burn, engine health. Probably your blood pressure too, if you ask nicely. Yamaha, on the other hand, doesn't chase the spotlight. Their approach? Quiet confidence. Their Helmaster EX system is smooth, reliable, and easy to use, but without the tech overload. Yamaha's more about systems that have been tested, retested, and still work after five years of saltwater abuse. No gimmicks, just gear that gets you home. Honda outboards feel exactly like a Civic on water. Everything works. It's smooth, economical, and borderline whisper quiet. But don't expect innovation fireworks. Honda's vibe is, if it ain't broke, don't update the firmware. Suzuki? Total dark horse. Their big block four strokes in the 200 to 350 HP range punch way above their weight, especially in low end torque. And they're sneaky with tech. Features like selective rotation and self adjusting timing chains aren't flashy, but make a real difference on the water. So, who's the real innovator? If you want cutting edge cool, Mercury takes the crown. If you want proven efficient performance that won't break a sweat or a wire, Japan's got your back. Let's face it, outboards aren't exactly impulse buys. You don't just pick one up with your groceries. So, when it comes to cost, people want to know who gives you the most bang for your hard-earned boating bucks. In the value corner, Suzuki and Honda come in swinging. Suzuki especially is the sleeper deal. You're not paying for flash, but you're getting a rugged, fuel-sipping workhorse that often undercuts the big players by thousands. Honda follows suit with a slightly higher price tag, but you're paying for smooth, quiet operation and that sweet, sweet Honda reputation. Now, if you're shopping Yamaha or Mercury, prepare to open the wallet a bit wider. Both brands sit firmly in the premium camp. Yamaha commands a higher price thanks to its reliability track record and strong resale value. And Mercury isn't far behind. You're paying for the tech, the performance, and that massive dealer network that means there's always a wrench nearby if something goes sideways. As for warranties, most brands offer three-year standard, with occasional promos stretching that to five. But there's nuance. Yamaha is a bit conservative here. No frills, no fuss, but coverage that does what it says. Mercury offers shiny platinum extended warranty packages, which sound impressive, but like any good plot twist, you'll want to read the fine print. Suzuki often throws in five years as standard during promos, and it's surprisingly solid. Honda sits right in the middle. Fair coverage, long service intervals, and parts that don't require a treasure map to find.
Moral of the story, decide if you want to pay now or maybe pay later, either in cash or in cranky starts. So here's the million dollar question. Are Japanese and American outboards actually that different? Well, yes and no. Classic boat answer, right? On paper, they're all combustion engines spinning a prop. Fuel goes in, noise comes out, hopefully fish follow. But it's the feel, the personality where things get interesting. Yamaha is like your calm, competent mate who's always on time, never breaks down, and somehow still looks brand new after 10 years. Mercury, the show-off with brains. Lots of tech, big numbers, and definitely the one who wears sunglasses even when it's cloudy. Suzuki is the quiet overachiever. Shows up, does the job better than expected, and leaves before the award ceremony. Honda, that's your dad's engine. Super sensible, reliant, efficient, but don't expect it to start a party. They differ in engineering philosophy. The Japanese brands are obsessed with precision, simplicity, and longevity. The Americans tend to focus on power, innovation, and user experience. But here's the twist. They're slowly becoming more alike. Yamaha is embracing more tech. Mercury is chasing long-term durability. Suzuki's getting flashier. And Honda… well, Honda's still Honda. It's like a weird global copycat game, but instead of detention, we get better motors. So yes, they're different, but also, they're all learning from each other, and we're the lucky ones in the middle, getting the best of both worlds, just with a lot more arguing at the boat ramp. Now here's a juicy bit for the boat ramp philosophers, the kind of story you hear secondhand from a guy who used to work for OMC and still wears the hat. Back when Japanese brands were just poking into the US market, OMC, the company behind Evinrude and Johnson, was not happy. They looked at Yamaha's early two-strokes and basically said, Oi, that's our homework. And honestly, they kinda had a point. Those first Yamahas did look suspiciously similar. There were lawsuits, licensing deals, legal grumbles, and Yamaha, rather than going to war, just quietly redesigned everything. The result? Ironically, better motors. Classic got sued into greatness story. Fast forward a few decades, and oh how the tables have turned. Now there's chatter that Mercury's newer four-strokes are looking a bit… familiar. Same gear case designs, similar layout, a few internal whispers that Yamaha might be living rent-free in Mercury's R&D department. Coincidence? Maybe. Or maybe Mercury's just gone, look, if we're gonna copy someone, might as well copy the best. The truth is, in this industry, everyone copies everyone. It's not always dramatic, it's just how tech evolves. One brand leads, the others follow, tweak it, call it something cooler, and slap a new badge on it. It's not piracy, it's progress, with a little petty rivalry sprinkled on top. Alright, let's stop sugarcoating and break it down. The strengths and weaknesses of each brand. No fluff, no fanboy goggles. Yamaha. Ultra reliable. The cockroach of outboards, in a good way. Holds its value better than your crypto wallet. But parts can be pricey. Bring your wallet and maybe a second mortgage. Diagnostics aren't exactly DIY friendly unless you speak fluent scan tool. Mercury. Packed with tech, it's basically a smart motor on steroids. Huge dealer network, helps never far, even on a Sunday. But older models had a, let's say, quirky relationship with reliability. Complex electronics equals more to go wrong, and more to blame your dealer for. Suzuki, fuel economy legend, sips fuel like it's in a drought. Great value, champagne performance on a beer budget. But the dealer network's thinner, especially if you break down somewhere remote, and parts delays can turn weekend fix into next month, maybe. Honda. Solid, smooth, and just nice, like the teacher's pet of outboards. Long service intervals mean fewer wrench days, but it feels a bit too much like your dad's sedan. 
Limited high horsepower options, not ideal for speed demons. No motor is perfect. They all come with trade-offs. The key is knowing what you need. Power, price, peace of mind, or just something that starts every time without drama. At the end of the day, picking the best outboard isn't about brand loyalty or national pride. It's about what actually works for you. Chasing power, tech, and the latest gadgets, Mercury is your high-octane soulmate. Need something that'll start every time, no drama, and probably outlive your boat? Yamaha has your back. Tight budget but still want performance and reliability, Suzuki delivers sneaky good value. Want something that feels like your daily driver, smooth and sensible? Honda will quietly do the job and thank you after. The truth is, in 2025, made in America and engineered in Japan might just be stickers. Behind the badges, it's a global game. The real winner? The one that gets you home every time.